<clears throat> Hi everyone, uh, I just wanted to do this quick video to show you a little tool that I'm working on called Our API. So the reason for this is um, it relates to Unit 4 of Digital Solutions. When students start looking at remote communication through a REST API and using JSON. And um, there's, there's a few sort of hurdles, particularly if, um, well I suppose it's for any school, but in EQ we've got quite a lot of things that are blocked and we have to go through a proxy. So the proxy can get in the way. We then not only have to learn how to communicate with a server, but we also have to do so getting through a proxy. We can run into other problems like perhaps that, or that website that we choose to use for our API. We may have our assessment um, all ready to go and then by the time it comes around we may find that site's blocked. So there's a few problems that I'm trying to get around and part of the solution for me is to build this program here. Now it's alpha, I've only just started, I've only been working on it a week so don't judge it by the way it looks just yet but I'll show you the, some of the functionality and the last thing I'll do is make the interface a lot more user friendly. So basically what I want to do is have a little application that pops up like this and it runs its own web server on your machine. So you can connect to it as the API and it will tell you what's happening as you go. So probably the best way to explain it is to give an example. So let's get our web browser here. Now I've got this URL already in here, but you'll notice that it's at localhost, which is this machine, and port 8000, because that's what we're running on. We're running the little application on our own machine and it's listening on port 8000. So if I press enter on this query, I'll come back and look at the rest of this in a moment. Okay, so because I've got a built-in uh, plugin that shows me that handles JSON, I've got this nice little click-through section here that I can use, but I can also just look at the raw text, and that's basically what's being returned from the application at the moment. So if I go back up to the application, you'll be able to see here that this was the query that was made to the local host. So I can see what the client has actually sent to me. I can see the IP address of the client, which at the moment they're both on the same machine, they're both on localhost. Uh, the port that I would reply to, to that client, so that's the negotiated port. And these are the headers and the data that gets sent back uh, to the client upon their request. All right, so not only does it solve all those issues, we've got complete control over this. Students can run it on their own machine. They can get all this information and see things happening in real time, have a look at what they get back from the server. But I also thought it would be really helpful if I came up with a nice, easy way for anyone to make their own API. So I've written the code so that there's this file here called definitions.ini. And basically what you do is it's really, really simple to create an API for your students you can change it every year if you want, is you just create a SQLite database file using DB Browser or something like that, have all the data in that you want, and then in this definitions file, you just say there's going to be a function of this name, and this is going to be the SQL that it runs. Okay, now if I need any additional information passed in um, from the user to the API, I can say the arguments go here. So you can put multiple arguments there, you can say country, name, whatever it is, just doing comma separated, and the API will automatically be built dynamically. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll check out one of these. Um, first of all, let's look at one that doesn't even have any arguments, it says it's got none. So list countries. So if I go back to my browser now, and I say I'm at localhost, the API query, I'm going to say my function equals list countries. Now just go back and check that, that that was right. It is in fact list countries. Yes it is. So if I go list countries and I press enter, we can see it's listed 25 countries in a list. And if I open up each one, then we've got an object there with the key and value pairs and uh, the query said to put it in alphabetical order so you got Antarctica, then Argentina, then Australia and so on. Okay and again if I just look at the raw text that came back that's the JSON string that I got back. 
So if I go back up here, you can see I called it list countries. If I um, just change this, let's just say I call it list country for whatever reason. So just to show you that this is actually working and it is live, if I run this again now, that actually won't work. So I'll get an error, error back saying no valid function specified. But if I go back up here and change it to list country, like I've now updated, well, you can see now it works again. So to handle your API, it's as simple as saying, this is going to be the function name. This is going to be the SQL that we run. And if I have any arguments that I need to pass in, then I do it through args. And what I do is I say, well, if there's an argument for country, where in my SQL does it go? You just put a colon and then the name of that argument. And the rest is all dynamically handled for you. Um, so if we have a look at um, country info, so we'll give that one a go as well. So I'll go up here and I'll say this time my function is country info, but now I also have to pass a parameter, which was the name of the country. So we said country equals, and I'll just go with Australia. Okay, and there we go. We've got our result here. That's the name of the country, the area, primary language. So there's all the information I wanted to grab from there. And the other one here was country info brief. So if I just wanted a smaller version, so I'll change the name of this function to info brief. Okay, and this time you can see it only has a couple of entries. So you could drop in any SQLite file that you made and all you have to do is go into this file, select, will write out what your function is, what the arguments are and what the SQL is and where those arguments go into the SQL by putting that little colon before the name of it. And so then when I'm reading the code, I know exactly um, how it all operates. So yeah, that's a little project that I'm working on at the moment. The interface is obviously needs to get a whole lot better than this, but it's just dumping some data out at the moment. And it's just as easy, as, as simple as running this program. You get this window, it'll be a lot nicer to look at. It'll give you all the information. You can see it updating live. So every time I do a request, all this information will change. You'll also be able to save the session so that um, you know, you can get on there and you can do some operations and then it'll be recorded into a file. So students could use it, for instance, if that was their API, to show it working and showing all the bits and pieces all happening. So primarily I envisage this as being a teaching tool, but the more I look at it, the more I think it could actually be an IA3 API. So you could go in and change the API to whatever context suits what you're doing at the time. So if we were doing a POS system for IA2, for instance, then we might say, well, now the server's moved off the local machine. It's now in a machine out the back at the kitchen. And we've got a number of different POS systems all connecting to them. So we're going to transfer the database now into this remote database. And you can just quickly, very, very quickly, throw together a bunch of functions. Um, you'll have all your SQL anyway. And in a very short time, you can have a full API up and running giving you all the information and showing you how it all works. So yeah, that's what I'm working on at the moment. Um, I'll keep you posted once I've got it looking a whole lot better, uh, working a lot nicer, then, um, then I'll release it and hopefully we can all get some use out of it in digital solutions.